Hey guys, welcome to the video. So, why cutting out sugar in January for a month didn't work for you. So I'm gonna talk about in this video why every year you feel like you need to go on these restrictive periods of cutting something out, like sugar, like specific things, like chocolate, cake, things like that. And the reasons why long term it's not gonna give you the results that you want. So while I'm here, if you have any questions for me, feel free to ask me down in the comments or I have a link there where you can send me a message on Instagram or on Facebook. But for now, let's get into the video. Okay, so for most people, they blame the failure on their diet to themselves rather than the method that they're following. So, oh, it was me, I didn't follow it or I couldn't follow it, it didn't work for me in this situation, so I did it wrong. And so they feel that to get results, they need to be even more on it and even more precise with what they're doing. So, oh, next time round, I'm going to be like completely focused. I'm not gonna go out, I'm gonna stay at home and make sure the meals are correct. And I'm gonna count like the calories and weigh all my food so it's precise. So the point is they feel they need even more precision and control over what they're doing to get results. As well as counting the points and the calories and maybe weighing food or however you are doing, it's quite common to say, as well, I'm gonna just cut out all those bad foods, the sugar, the chocolate, whatever it is, and give yourself like a challenge, yeah, and I'll get really good results because of that. But at the same time you say to yourself, just for a month, because of course no one can live like that, right? No one's gonna give up their favorite foods forever. If you do, that's pretty unrealistic, right? And side note, if the process you are following is not something you can do for the rest of your life, so if you say to yourself, I'm only gonna do this for a short amount of time, it's not worth doing because you're always gonna rebound from it. So it's wasted time. Wasted time for the actual process, but wasted time in learning because not only do you then put the weight back on or go backwards, but you haven't learned anything in that time. So it's wasted time where you could have learned actually how to eat properly. And also, so think about it, in the past you may have had a diet that worked okay for you and you maybe lost some weight for a while and forgot you put the weight back on, but unconsciously told yourself, oh, that diet worked because I lost weight and maybe kept it off for a few weeks or however much time. But you forgot that actually afterwards you put the weight back on, so something wasn't right there. But maybe you do, again, blame that on yourself. But what I'm saying here is you may have unconsciously remembered or thought, that worked for me because I lost weight for a little while. And so you can kind of think, oh, when I did that, I was totally on it. I was like really precise and controlling around what I was doing and it gave me results. So you may have attributed that being precise and controlling around your food to getting results. Wrongly, of course, because then you ended up in the situation you are now, putting the weight back on. So it didn't work long term. But just remember that. So because of this, you believe that being precise and being so focused and everything going perfectly is the best method for weight loss. So when it comes around to your January diet, whenever it is, you diet even harder, you're even more precise, even more controlling. You shy away from certain social events because you don't want that distraction, you don't want that possibility of eating something that might not fit to your plan. And so it's totally on it, totally focused. And what does this do? This leads to even more overwhelm and even more stress and even more tiredness from the focus and the precision that you have to have to be at this level. So you're in a state of total overwhelm. And so what you do, what have you done? You've trained your brain to hate dieting. You've trained your brain to hate the process. Like we don't like doing this but we have to to lose the weight. So that's a very important point. The process of dieting, the process of working towards something you want, you hate doing and you train your brain through the amount of precision and control that you feel you have to have, that this is not a nice process. And have you noticed that every single time you diet over the years, depending on how long you've been dieting for, your willpower gets shorter and shorter. So maybe the first time you dieted, 
you were able to last for quite a long time. And then the second time, a little bit less. And over the years, it's got shorter and shorter because you've trained your brain to hate the process. So it's like, oh, not another diet. And you predict what's coming. You know what's going to come. You know it's going to be a period of deprivation and just feeling terrible and just not enjoying life. And that makes you go for even more extreme things, quick things, things that you think will give quick results, like cutting out sugar for a month. Because yeah, if I cut out sugar, I can lose a load of weight really fast. But of course, as you know, from previous tries as well, that this doesn't work long term. And also because you have trained your brain to hate the process, you can only be motivated when you're seeing results when you're seeing the scale go down, when you're seeing your clothes change, because why do something you hate? You hate yourself and you hate the diet. So it comes down to what am I gonna do because I hate both of them. I'll do the one that takes the less, least effort. So what's the least effort? Just hating yourself, right? If you hate yourself and hate where you are in life and hate doing the diet, and the diet isn't working for you, which one are you gonna do? The one where you don't have to do anything. So if you're not seeing results, then you do nothing. So your motivation is constantly attached to the need of seeing that scale go down. And of course, we know that that is not realistic because when we measure ourselves, when we weigh ourselves, what we're seeing is weight change, not fat change. So there's various things that can change what the scale shows. Stress, which we are under anyway, through all these processes, can cause water retention. Certain times of the month can cause water retention. Drinking more water can make you heavier. Food in your digestive system, all these things that can lead to showing a higher number on the scale when you might have actually got results. But if our motivation is attached to constantly seeing that number go down, then it can be wavering when we don't see what we want to see because we hate the process. We don't enjoy doing it. So we need to see that number move. And so this is very important. And so we're on and off the diet because, oh, what's the point of doing this? Because I put on two pounds this week. I hate doing it. So I may as well just not do it. And so you have no direction and no motivation that constantly takes you and moves you forward. So it's so important not to operate like this. And unfortunately, this is how a lot of people have trained themselves over the year, years from doing a lot of dieting, and you just get to this extreme level of needing to do these extreme things. So the solution to this is bringing it right back and understanding that you don't need to do extreme things to lose weight. You need to do a couple of things and also sort a few things out up here. So bringing it back from these extreme things. And first of all, thinking about how can we measure food? So what I do with my clients is visual portion sizes. So no need to count, no need to weigh the stress and how to do this in different situations going out for a meal. You can't weigh your food. So being able to use visual portion sizes, using our eyes and our hands to sort of judge what we're eating is a very important skill to use. And this is kind of like a baseline way of eating. And then over the week, including a few things that you enjoy on top of that. And this is enough for 99.9% .9 of people to get really good results year round. There's a few people like, for example, that are doing competitions, boxers, and bodybuilders, things like that, that need to go to a bit more extreme level. But then again, they don't do it year round. It's only for temporary periods of time. So what this does as well, it takes away the stress of thinking and counting food. So straight away, you are more relaxed around food and it works in all situations. And I mentioned as well about stuff up here. So a lot of people, they are using food to regulate their emotions. So the question is, can you regulate your emotions or do you regulate your emotions without the use of food? For a lot of people, they've trained themselves accidentally to use food to do that. So when you get a craving, it's not really the food you want, it's the change in feeling. You feel a certain way, you wanna feel another way. Food is just the link between those two things. And so what I do with my clients is we train, we work out, um, we, we train you <laughs> how to actually do this without the use of food. So some people are using 
alcohol, some people are using drugs, shopping, gambling, watching TV, playing with their phone, to change the way they feel. But of course, these are disempowering ways. So being able to do this internally, internally in your mind, is a very important skill. And so if you feel you, like, you struggle with these kind of things, feel free to let me know. This is what I do, this is what I help people with. So I hope that kind of gave you an insight into why these strategies for weight loss don't work long term. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Like if you found this useful, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.